Hey folks, uh, welcome to Coffee and Revelation on Tuesday. I'm just heading away up to Newcastle. Uh, that is Newcastle, of course, here in Australia. Not the city with the wonderful football team in England. And we are still Revelation 21. For those of you who are new, we've just been working our way through the book of Revelation bit by bit. And we come to these last two chapters and we're just taking it each bit as we go. And we're at verse, each verse really. And we're at verse 26 where it's talking about the city, uh, Jerusalem, the new heavens, the new earth. And it said, yesterday we saw that there was no gates ever would be shut for there would be no night there. And then this, the glory and honour of the nations will be brought into it. Now, I think nations are important. I think there's a kind of move that some people have. We say we don't need nations, you know, we're all one world, etc., etc. But I think nations are part of God's order in terms of bringing stability and governance in a fallen world. I think nations can go wrong, and they most go wrong when they turn against God. So I just thought I'd reflect on this for a little bit using a couple of Psalms. The first is Psalm 2. Why do the nations conspire and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band themselves against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their chains and throw, throw off their shackles. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them, he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath. We've just elected here in Australia, well, I didn't get a vote because it's New South Wales and I wouldn't be able to vote here anyway. I, I don't have a vote anywhere. Um, I'm disenfranchised. But uh, there's just been a vote in Victoria where Dan Andrews has been elected. Now, I'm not so much concerned about the economics and all the rest of it. What I'm concerned about is, as Greg Sheridan pointed out in an article in The Australian, he's fundamentally anti-Christian and mocks God. And there are other nations that do the same. They, they, we think we are in control. We think we can sort things out. Uh, and we can't, the, you nations, go, the nations going against God. And I think of Psalm 79, O oh God, the nations have invaded your inheritance. They've defiled your holy temple. They've reduced Jerusalem to rubble and so on. Before our eyes, make known among the nations that you avenge the outpoured blood of your, your servants. Why should the nations say, where is their God? Well, Revelation 21 has the nations bringing their honor and glory to God. In the Old Testament and in the New Testament, we have the nations attacking and burning and destroying the city of Jerusalem. But we have, in Revelation 21, the nations coming and bowing before Christ. And that for me is true of Xi Jinping. It's true of Joe Biden. It's true of Anthony Albanese. It's true of Rishi Sunak. Whoever. Putin, whoever. Now, the other side of that is to think, you know, the nations think that they are so powerful. And I've been thinking a lot about Isaiah 14. It says this in verse 15, surely the nations are like a drop in the bucket. They're regarded as dust on the scales or before him, all the nations are as nothing. They are regarded by him as worthless and less than nothing. So we have this paradoxical situation in Western democracies where those who are our leaders think, oh yeah, it's okay for you to be the religious, but we're really the ones in charge. And in effect, God bows down to us. And God's saying, no, that's not how this works. You will bow down to me. And you know, when I, I think of Alistair Campbell saying about Tony Blair, we don't do God or don't bring religion into politics. I actually think our politicians should do God. I think our politicians should acknowledge Jesus as Lord. I think they should acknowledge their own weakness. And I think they should acknowledge like the late queen did, that they are God's servants there to do God's will. That doesn't mean that you have a theocracy, but it does mean that you have a nation state with leaders who submit themselves to a higher authority. And I think that's got to be good for any nation state. Anyway. I just thought it was really interesting that this big emphasis on heaven 
is on the nations coming in, not just the individuals. And, you know, in a strange kind of way, I find that comforting. God bless you and see you tomorrow once I return from Newcastle. Bye.